Sure, I've been sexually harassed at work, as have 80% of women. I wrote a story about taking a glass of water and pouring it down the front of my harasser's pants. So. Hi everybody, it's me, Keisha Sharp, and we are here to talk uh, about another screen story. So here we are. Today we're gonna talk about the Good Fight, and it, it's an incredible show on CBS All Access. They did over the quarantine play it on CBS, so I hope you guys got a chance to catch it. If you didn't, go and watch it. It is an amazing show with some incredible, talented actors and producers and directors and all of that. So I played on the um, on the show Naomi. So one of the things I want to talk about today is when you're cast. Um, and you're playing two roles, one on a different show and a different show. How do you do that? So I was doing Lethal Weapon playing Trish Murtaugh on Fox. And I was asked to come and play Naomi on The Good Fight. Thank you, Mark Sachs. Uh, <laughs> I had to quickly, I'll tell you how it happened. So I'm shooting Lethal Weapon. They agreed, you have to have the show agreed that you can do another show at the same time. So make sure you get that in your contract. And so <laughs> I had to fly out to shoot um, The Good Fight. When I'll tell you really quickly, it was a blizzard. Uh, it was during, I think it was 2018 Christmas, right before. And it was the blizzard where everything shut down. And I had to fly on the only flight that went out um, on a red eye. No flights went out that whole day. And I flew. If you know anything about me getting through flying, I flew through a storm and it was a rocky, rocky flight <laughs> the whole time. And I was okay. I was literally okay. I got there and early in the morning and had to go shoot that same day. Most of what you're going to see. And you just have to have stamina and make sure you're eating well, getting enough sleep on that plane if you can. It can be hard, but it's worth it when you want to um, exercise all of this um, oh, different characters and you can't while you're on a show, tied to a show. So I got there and I'm shooting. I'll show you the scene I'm going to show you. It's the first scene I shot and it was with some amazing actors and I'm going to name them so you can know who they are. Audra McDonald, if you don't know, now you know. She's... She's Broadway royalty, you know, I'm just telling you. <laughs> amazing actor, singer, just, you know, triple threat, amazing. Then we have F. Murray Abraham. I'm pausing on purpose because the man is amazing. And we had such a great time sparring with each other. I just would like to see all the, you know, the cutting floor scenes or, you know, takes because we did, we had a great time sparring with each other. I felt I met a new friend. <laughs> and then we have Delroy Lindo. I'm gonna tell you another story later, but we've worked together quickly at another time, but he's he's you, he's black royalty. You don't know, now you know. <laughs> Delroy Lindo, incredible actor as well. And then we have Christine Baranski. She is a legend, Broadway royalty, TV royalty, movie royalty. <laughs> incredible actor so and then we had other really wonderful actors at the table as well so this is my first scene and now I'm going to show you this first scene and Naomi I'm sorry that's the character I played um who holds her own she's a woman who is looking for the truth and one of the things I loved about this character and the storyline it was during the Me Too movement the beginnings of the Me Too movement. Again, I, w I don't want this Me Too movement to ever be something we talk about as history. It should always be something that's current. Um, and she's a, a journalist searching for the truth and at any means necessary, legal way. <laughs> so here we go, here's the first scene. Like everyone else, I didn't want to believe it at first. I mean, who'd want to, it's Kip Dunning. He was supposed to be one of the good ones. He is one of the good ones. Mr. Preston, please let Ms. Nafola continue. Thank you. You can call me Naomi. Look, I stand by my sources. I don't know what else to say. And how long have you been working on this story? Two months. And how'd you approach these two women? I didn't. I saw their stories on me too. I wrote them and asked if they would be willing to comment. They were hesitant, but they agreed to have lunch. So you were trolling me too for stories? Mr. Preston, come on. It's a fair question. Let her answer. No. I was writing my own account on Me Too, and that's how I saw their stories. Your own account? 
So you're pursuing this story as a vendetta? <laughs> you know, I don't find this funny, man, do you? Hmm. The destruction of a man's life? No, I don't find that funny. I find your question funny. Oh? Uh-huh. Sure, I've been sexually harassed at work, as have 80% of women. I wrote a story about taking a glass of water and pouring it down the front of my harasser's pants. So, I don't think my story has any connection to the rapes and sexual assaults mentioned in my piece. Is there any chance that the two victims have a political bias? You mean, are they O'Keefe plants? Yes. I checked their backgrounds and they held up. And not that it matters, but both women did not vote in 2016. And one was a Bernie supporter. Who might be angry at Gibbs' support for Hillary. Hmm. Sure. But why don't you ask them? Why don't you check my sources? Uh, we are. Good. Okay, so you notice that little smile at the end of the scene. So now this next scene will um, give you insight to why that was. So here we go. See ya. Like some pizza. No, thank you. So, you worried that Beth is a bit high strung? Yeah, she was going on about being pursued by Jews. Mm -hmm. she, she was worried about black cube. She anti-Semitic. My guess, she probably is. You don't think that matters? I think that anti-Semites can be harassed too. Then maybe that should be included in your new story also. Maybe it should. <laughs> All right, I guess I've seen you on TV. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know you. Mm -hmm. Probably. This is not the right time for this. <laughs> what? One in the morning over cold pizza? <laughs> Maybe we could go for coffee sometime. You don't recognize me. That's the thing. I, I, I think I do. No, no. Uh, you were a guest lecturer in criminal defense at University of Chicago. I was your student. Oh, my God. <laughs> what class? Criminal evidence. Oh, wow. Hmm. Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. I sat in the front. My hair was different. But you never became a lawyer? No. Why not? Because of you. Because? Yes. I wasn't pretty enough for you. Excuse me? <laughs> I was in the same class as Liz Reddick. You only had time for her. So, I think I'll skip the coffee. So I hope you enjoy that scene. And some people ask why was the, a lot of this episode so dark, like you can't see outside and all those kinds of things. Well, this uh, episode takes place th for, in one day, including through the night. So that's why. Uh, and I wanted to tell you a quick story about Delroy and myself. So when I was younger, living in New York and also in Boston, I, I did a few August Wilson plays and uh, Seven Guitars in Boston and Jitney and the Alliance Theater in Atlanta. Incredible director, Kenny Leon, and August Wilson was also involved with that Jitney production. So I gotta tell you, it's, it's weird how things work out. I was asked while we were living in New York to go and sing for August Wilson. He was receiving the Edward Albee Award in Alaska, of all places. <laughs> I love Alaska. And so I traveled to Alaska with my mom and I went there to sing, do a concert, a 30 minute concert for August Wilson. But when I got there, they also asked me to do all the, also all the readings of the August Wilson plays with August Wilson and with Delroy Lindo. We had some other incredible actors there as well. And Delroy Lindo and, and my mom and, and his wife got really close and I did and we went water rafting together. We did some fun things together. So years later, 20 years later, I think, I'm working on the show with Delroy Lindo. But the funny part is, just like his character, he didn't remember. So I came back the third, the next season uh, to do the show again um, with playing Naomi. 
and he comes to me he says you know you're, you're such a you know great actress and I just, I'm really just so happy to have you here. And he said, but I also need you to settle a bet with me. I said, okay. He said, my wife is dead set that you were in Alaska and whatever year it was, I don't remember, <laughs> with us. And we, you know, you were there, you sang and you did readings. He's like, but I don't think, he said, that I, that I just don't, I don't think it's you. And I said, your wife is smart. <laughs> your wife won that bet, boo. <laughs> It was me, and so it's cute that he didn't remember Naomi. <laughs> he didn't remember me, um, uh, Keisha, 20 years prior. Uh, so I just thought it was so cute. Anyway, so I'm going to leave you with this last scene. Naomi, can we talk about this? It's not a big deal. I'm sorry I brought it up. Yeah, but I was just thinking back. I never played favorites. I oh, never... Come on, Adrian. Come on, at least be honest. Who got the coveted internship? Who got the glowing recommendation letters? Can we talk downstairs? I wasn't in charge of the internship program, Naomi. No, but your words carried weight. Why are we doing this? Because I don't think I did anything wrong. Liz Reddick was a good student. Well, you started dating two months later. After the class was over, and that had nothing to do with where I directed my attention. Okay. You're faultless. I wasn't saying that. You spent the whole class smothering Liz with attention. And I get it. You had a crush. But there were a lot of women in that class who were smart and capable. And they left the lesser. Naomi, it's Liz. Liz Reddick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm sorry I'm late. I, I just got the call for this case. Hey, Adrian, you remember Naomi from college? Yeah, she looks really different. <laughs> really? I, I don't think she's aged today. Thank you. We were uh, just discussing criminal evidence. Oh, yes. That was a good class. <laughs> you, know, you decided against becoming a lawyer. Yeah. It's too bad. You would have made a great one. Thanks. And I have to tell you, when I read it, I didn't understand why this strong woman would feel the way she's saying. So I had to find it within myself as, a, as the actor. Why would this character feel, leave something that she loved because a teacher didn't invest in her? Because as Keisha, I was like, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Of course, you just push past. What does it matter that this professor made you feel that way? But not everyone feels that way, right? So this character, it really affected her in a way that she, she no longer felt that she was good enough to be a lawyer, that she could see herself. If this professor, who she looked up to so much, didn't see it in her, she couldn't see it in her. And I understood it. And, you know, I had to understand I was playing this character and I understood her pain then. But when I first read it, I didn't. And this is just a shout out to teachers and professors out there. You are important. What you say is so important to students who are trying to find themselves and find their purpose. And to all the students out there, do not let one person, whether it's a te teacher or professor, stop you from your purpose. So we both have lessons in there. So, okay. So thank you so much for watching. I'll tell you a quick story. This character came back in the third season for two more episodes. However, there were a lot of conflicts with working out my schedule with Lethal Weapon. And so it couldn't work out anymore. So uh, sadly, because I just love the show and I'm still a big fan of the show. So go and watch it, please. Go and support the show. Thank you for watching Screen Stories with Keisha. Subscribe and follow and let me know what project you want to hear me talk about next. Anything, movie, episode, it doesn't matter. <laughs> a live thing that I did, a talk show. If you want me to talk about something like that, how did that work? I'll let you know too. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.